I'm uploading this to the weekly slap because uh, I hate twit longers and I hate notepad screenshots. And this is really the only serious outlet I've ever had to talk about stuff. So it, it felt uh, kind of appropriate to put it here. Around late February, early March, Carson told the Lunch Club guys, as well as a bunch of, uh, a bunch of close friends of his at the time, that he had been sexting his fans. He explained that he had exchanged photos with the 17-year-old while he was 19 and that he was done with it. He hadn't done it in months. Um, he, he was ashamed of what he had done and, uh, and all that stuff. Some context for you. Early 2020 was when Carson was at the lowest point in his life. He was extremely depressed. Um, little did we actually know why, but I knew he had been struggling with imposter syndrome when it came to YouTube and social media and that kind of stuff. And that was something I could relate to uh, in, a, in a pretty big way. So I was there for him. You know, I, I would be in calls with him all the time uh, talking about anxiety, mental health, um, what it means to have this job and um, how not to let it drive you up the wall, all that kind of stuff. And in that time, I, I got extremely close to him. I wouldn't call it best friends, but he was up there. And right after Carson had told us the truth, the Kate situation happened. And, you know, regardless of what we felt about the Kate situation, uh, we saw Carson's mental state decline even more. Um, and, it, and it was to the point that we genuinely thought his life could be in danger. And I felt like I needed to be there for him. And that's why I stuck with him. And that's why people like Josh and Connor stuck with him. In March and April, uh, we'd be in calls with him almost every night uh, till the sun came up, trying to help him through what he was going through. And I just want to say, like, I, I never condoned what had what he had done. Um, I remember a call with uh, with him and Josh, where both of us basically said to him, like, "Dude, if this behavior continues, we're done." You know, our close friend had fucked up, but he was also in a very dangerous place, and we felt like we had to be there for him. You know, and and in doing that, we could give him the guidance and the company he needed to help him get out of this depressive state he was in and help him, you know, help him grow and, and become a better person. We talked him into seeing a therapist. We helped him form a better relationship with social media because he'd check his indirects constantly and he'd have a tab open of every different site that he would just refresh. Um, we talked him out of doing the impulsive shit he told us he was thinking of doing, like deleting all the social media and posting about Kate. Uh, and obviously some of those attempts were <laughs> less successful than others. But so much time spent with the guy just uh, trying to be good friends for him and uh, and trying to do what we thought was, was the right thing to do. But a few weeks ago, I started having some conversations with some of Carson's closest friends, including his former roommates. And in my discussions with them, I heard some things that suggested that Carson wasn't improving uh, in the areas that he should have been. Uh, and he was showing signs of continuing some of his inappropriate behavior. And apparently this was happening while I was spending all this time trying to help him. And, and while he was saying that he was working on himself and that he was changing and that he, he hates the person he used to be. These conversations were really the ones that got me second guessing how genuine Carson had been to me and to others throughout this whole thing. I remember me and Connor were in Austin at the time and uh, over a long ass dinner, we just kind of put all the pieces together that uh, that we often ignored because of how close we were to him and because of uh, how well he had always treated us. You know, there were always stories I'd hear from his roommates about how he treated them um, and how he generally <laughs> just acted uh, that, that I glossed over and I shouldn't have. Also, seeing the DMs uh, he exchanged with some of the girls that have come forward uh, absolutely fucking disgusted me. Up until yesterday, I thought that all these encounters Carson had were very much, you know, spur of the moment mistakes that he regretted instantly. Um, and that was very, that was very much the story that everybody was told. And knowing what we do now, it's simply just not the case. This was something he per he pursued. Looking back now, almost every step of the way, Carson tried to downplay what had actually happened. Uh, I, I remember a time when he ha he even referred to the last time it had happened as like quarter four 2019 instead of giving us an actual uh, date. <laughs> and dude, I, I'm, I'm shocked. You know, like uh, I, I can no longer say with any confidence that I believe Carson's behavior has ever stopped. You know, I can't take his word for it anymore. 
when I came to this realization a few weeks ago, I, I cut ties with Carson and uh, started talking to the other guys about how best to go about this. And I got to hand it to Noah and Travis for stepping up and talking about it first. I feel for all the victims here. And to know that, uh, that more people could have been hurt this year while Carson and I were friends and while I continued to associate with him and while, while I believed that he was on the right path, uh, it, it, that fucking kills me, you know? Um, I, I hope all of them have gotten and continue to get the help they need to get through this. Uh, because this is, a, this is a recurring problem now of content creators who take complete advantage of and uh, manipulate the people that care about them the most. I don't think Carson's a pedophile, but that's what he did. He used his power to repeatedly take advantage of vulnerable people. I don't know what causes this to happen. I don't know what compels content creators to do this, but it happens. Uh, and it's a big fucking problem. And as cliche as it is for me to say this, I really hope Carson gets the help that he very, very clearly needs as well. That's about all I have to say. Thank you all for listening and uh, be well.